Yeah, that's a hard ball. Um, the kind, those kind of moves just fry your head. Like it can be, they don't have to even be the hardest moves on the route, but they can be like a low percentage move, like a slap or something. And you know, you can just fall and then it's all over. You've got to rest and then have another go. And those moves always stay in the back of your mind. But um, I know that's the kind of, they're the kind of routes that I really enjoy as well. It's kind of this idea of living off grid. But when we first moved in it was it was pretty middle ages, like candles for lighting and, and a fire, and that was it. I mean I first came here when I was like seventeen on a climbing trip for two weeks and I just thought it was paradise. I remember going home and just trying to persuade my parents that they needed to move to Spain or something. You know, <laughs> there is the place to be. And at that point it wasn't so popular. It hadn't been um, kind of exposed in the media as like the next, the next level for sport climbing. But you could see the potential was enormous. The wall in Finestra is just a perfect wall. It's amazing. It's quite incredible that it even exists because it's so overhanging. Normally, if you find a wall that steep, the rock's not great, but this wall is just perfect rock. Just, I really like the style. Um, I kind of felt like it was maybe a bit of a weakness of mine, you know, kind of climbing on pockets is something I'd never really done. And so I thought, well, you know, if you want to get better, you need to kind of target your weaknesses and, and um, work at them. You ca I don't know, I kind of thought I was a bit invincible or something at that point. I was going climbing, trying my hardest, trying my you know, hardest projects, and then rest days, working on the house. Mixing cement, carrying you know, 30 kilo bags of sand and cement, um, and then trying to carry boulders from the living room, which was like an old horse trough that were dismantled, like destroyed basically. And then carrying those boulders out through a window and I just thought, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can just do that on my own. And um, yeah, my back was just like, couldn't handle it. And uh, one day I was carrying one of these boulders and I felt something go in my lower back. Um, but I don't know, I just thought it was muscular. So I kind of, I, th I think I carried on that day, you know, carried on lifting boulders and doing some stuff. Just like, ah, oh, this is annoying, this like muscle pull or whatever. And then a few days later, went climbing again in Santa Linea. Still trying, project trying a 9A there. And uh, 
climbing was okay. It didn't feel too painful. But as soon as I fell off, it was like this, I don't know, this kind of like needle pain I could feel like in my lower back. And I just knew then that there was, there was something really wrong. And that's when I kind of, after that, it got much worse. And then I went to see, uh, you know, like went to see the, the doctors and they saw what I'd done. Um, and like herniated a couple of discs in my lower back. So yeah, disaster. <laughs> setting up this lifestyle, this kind of like life revolved around climbing in Catalonia um, at the heart of it and then just uh, destroy it all in one go with uh, lifting some boulders. Kind of like a reality check. Harry. I remember the first day I went back to Erebea, like the first day thinking, right, I'm going to get back on the 9A. I was super nervous. I, my feet were slipping off and everything because I was so nervous to get back on it and to see if I could do it again. scared as well. I hadn't been climbing on a rope for a long time and I hadn't fallen off so I didn't know how that was going to be on my back. It, it went quite quickly. I was, you know, I was pretty shocked and surprised and happy really. Yeah, yeah, I think it's better in spring. And then you get that like nice Spanish late start. <laughs> you can get up, chill, have a coffee and then go climbing. <laughs> When I'm at the house, at my house, you know, there's so much still left to be done that I can't help but try and do the work on it as well. I kind of feel like I should be working on it. So I spend my rest days trying to work on it and then I'm not resting. So I kind of made the decision to, you know, just focus on climbing again and just like come and spend some time back in the van and just go climbing, kind of live that simple lifestyle of get up, have breakfast, go to the bar and have a coffee and then head out climbing. You know, really simple life, nothing else to think about, just just climbing and your projects and, and that's all. It's, um, that, that kind of simplicity to it 